some sort. But, I mean, I doubt it's just hearsay, you know? Not okay. that I remember. Okay, well, but Did you would remember. Okay. Uh. If you'd like, whenever, uh, just speak to her the whole time, kind of like the camera's off here. It's not there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can I start? With pain. Okay. Good morning, this is Lee Keener, sitting on my front porch of the remainder of what used to be my farm, but we only have 4.1 acres left with the original house. My dad had a farm originally that was part of well, all of uh, Union Township Park. It was John Keener and my mother's name was Zelda. I had two brothers and a sister, one brother John, one brother Robert, and a sister Aunt Catherine. We were born and raised here on this farm. I've been here all my life with the exception of four years at Ohio State two years with the Ohio Farm Bureau, and two years with the U.S. military. So I've spent my whole life here on the farm. Uh, tell me about the beginning, when you were a youngster growing up there. What were your duties, or what did you do on the farm? Oh, that, that's getting back in history now, Mary. <laughs> oh, gosh, yes, I can remember that just as plain as can be. We had a gravel driveway from here, cut out to Westchester Road, which was a half a mile. And then we had to walk the total distance to Pisgah to Pisgah Special School, where I spent the first eight grades in that one-room rural school. And I'd be amiss if I didn't mention my school teacher, Ralph West, for those seven years. We had to leave the name of Mrs. Miller my first year. Ralph West and continued for seven years as a teacher at Pisgah Special School until they consolidated with Westchester. And, uh, well, you walked. You didn't, uh, didn't have school buses. Or, well, I had bicycles later, but then... Uh, going that, uh, that route, uh, we had our chores to do. Uh, Brother Bob was by me. He, he liked the cows, so he was a help milk more than the rest of us. Brother Don liked to raise pigs, so he fed the hogs, and I liked the sheep, so I kind of took care of the sheep and the chickens. So it was kind of spread out. Everybody had his own little job, and it worked out just fine. So what were your recreation? What did you do for recreation? Got together with neighbors, and this will hit your raw hands, and his... Sister Dorothy was our next door neighbor, as well as Carl Gundler and his sister Dorothy and some of their brothers and sisters. In the wintertime, we used to sit right on this hill over here where we see houses now. And uh, used to get together and, oh, uh, then everybody who got tired would usually come to the house. Mother would have hot cocoa or something for us. And that was part of our recreation. And in the summertime, we played softball. And I remember, too, we played handy handy over and, uh, that was 4th of July, more than any time, I guess, when we got together with the Hanses. And we just had a good time playing together. But we played with our neighbors and visited with our neighbors, Gunner and the Hanses and the over here, and uh, that was about as far as you got, really. Well, it would be a miss if I didn't mention Standers, too, because they were right down here, Pete Stander and his family. So that was, that was part of our rural life, yeah. So what did you do for medical? Medical? Yeah. Hmm. In my early years, I can remember if we needed something, Dad would get on the horse and ride down to Standers and use their telephone because we didn't have a telephone. And I don't remember when it was before we got a telephone. I think it was when Melvin and I moved her. Probably 1950s. It would take a year or two before we had a phone there. Because I remember having put in poles. And we asked the company what it would be to put in, and it was some fabulous figure to put poles, string wire, and then I said, oh, God, you can't be now. I said, well, you want to put up the poles, we'll bring the wire for, I was pittance what they wanted to pull and everything, and I said, hey, you got yourself a deal. <laughs> so, that's the way I did with that. <clears throat> doctor come to the house? Pardon? Did your doctor come? Oh, yeah, Dr. Bickley from Garenville was our family doctor, and uh, I can remember him coming to my uh, to the house here one time when I had strep throat. And also, uh, after I'd been bed for about a week, he said, you can get up now, Lee, and my mom said, well, Lee, when you down, don't just jump out of bed because you're not going to be able to stand up. And I thought, ah, I'm a big boy now. I hopped out of bed and fell flat on my face. <laughs> what kind of medicine did he give you for that? Oh, gosh, I don't remember. It wasn't any antibiotics because they weren't they were around yet. But uh, just bed rest and, and soup, I suppose. I don't know. Well, I was talking to the Williams brothers. They said the beef always had a little whiskey with it. Well, he used to have, yeah. It's different, you know, sometimes with women. Well, mother always had that. Uh, that was her medicine cabinet with And she kept pretty tight clothes. Uh, Put hand on that, too. Was whiskey and uh, and like you said, vinegar or whatever. Mix it with, I forget what you used to mix that with. 
Make hot toddy, she called out of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Done that. Yeah, done that. Been there, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Never done that. Yeah. Uh, as you were growing up, uh, and you, uh, tell, me, tell me an experience with D. Russell Lee about your getting ready to go off to Ohio State. Oh, of course, that was, that's going on down the line now. I uh, graduated from high school in the spring of 44, and that was still in the World War II era. So my birthday being in October, I figured, ah, there's no use going to school or doing anything, planning anything, because they're going to draft me anyhow. So I was casually taking in the summer, enjoying everything, and one morning, and like, like you said, I, I slept outside most of the time, because that was the upstairs attic in this house, without a fan or without anything, was hot. I mean, hot, hot, not certain. So one morning, about 9.30 or 10 o'clock, I woke up, and there was D. Ross Lee on the other side of the fence, and he said, come on, Ezra, and that was his pet name for me. He said, come on, Ezra, it's time to get up. I said, oh, Mr. Lee, yeah. He said, what do you, what do you need? He said, well, he said, I just go over and talk to you. I said, Ezra, I think you need to get yourself ready and go up to Ohio State, get registered in school. I said, well, yeah. You think that'd be a good idea, huh? Russ, <laughs> Russ said, I sure do. She said, oh, when you get ready, you get up, get up there and get registered. So believe it or not, I stuck up my thumb on about 42. Hit like Columbus, got registered, got a room. Went out on Broad Street, stuck up my thumb, and hit check back all in the same day. Without any pre-registration, all these CATs and, and tests that the kids go through now, I just went up and registered and come back home. And what was your major? A uh, uh, major in agriculture, uh, actually a major in uh, animal husbandry, with a uh, specific major in poultry, because I, I like chickens, and uh, that's the reason for the poultry house out here now on the farm. When I came back, I built that for raising brothers. Raised 5,000 at a time, which is no big deal. They raise them by 500,000 at a time now. Well, these are the ones I raised to begin with were uh, broilers. Raised them, kept them about 12 weeks until they got to be about three to three and a half pounds, and sold them, and then cleaned the house out, put in another bunch. But now uh, I understand my friend Dan Soupy, who is a poultry and over Maryland area, all over Maryland, poultry area, they get a three pound bird something like six weeks now instead of 12. It, it's fantastic what they do and uh, Tim Rosno raises chicken now and he's, uh, what do you call them, freelance, had them out on grass and so forth and uh, he's, his chickens are good. We, we bought some for him every time he has some that's ready. But it, it is fan, it's fantastic what the difference between the time and the amount of feed that took uh, to produce pound meat. I can remember then, it used to take about three pounds of feed to produce pound meat when I was doing it in the uh, 50s. Now, it takes just a little bit over a pound of feed to produce a pound of meat. The conversion is, is just almost one one. It's unbelievable what they can do with it. So from that standpoint, from a farmer's standpoint, what would you rather eat, ground corn or chicken? <laughs> So that, that's what technology has done just in this short period of time since, uh, well, late 50s and 60s, 40 years. Well, when you were farming, I know, getting new chemicals or anything is more or less organic-like, natural? More or less, uh, O and back. Yeah. <laughs> o yeah. and back, and yeah. Back. No, we didn't, uh, early, you know, uh, we didn't, when we were kids were all home, no, they didn't have herbicides and, and so forth. We used fertilizer, of course. Yeah. But uh, we cultivated a field with horses and the horse drawn cultivators and uh, we were fortunate enough to have one riding cultivator, one walking cultivator, but I always liked the walking one because you'd use the hands like that and just make it just like you would hand cultivating the, the row. And uh, I can remember using horses a lot of time and we had one old alder that after about four o'clock in the afternoon he had an awful hard time getting him turned around the road and head back again rather than taking off for the barn. He'd come to this end of the row towards the barn and he'd keep going like that. <laughs> <coughs> Hey, he knew when he was tired. He wanted to go home. <laughs> uh, as you uh, grew up and you grew older, and you went to college, then what did you do? Well, first two years out of college, I pursued my major in poultry. Worked for Ohio Farm Bureau as a baby chick animal health sales representative, uh, contacting the county outlets throughout the state of Ohio. It was 80, I think at that time, there were 88 different outlets that I was supposed to contact, period, some time or other, <clears throat> and uh, keep them up to date on current medications and current cell baby checks, because at that time we had a hatchery in Columbus, 
and we ship baby chips all over the state of Ohio. So that was my job for two years. <clears throat> and then I came back to the farm and built my, my uh, brother house, raised brothers for mm, 15 years or so. And there again, economics took over there. The last bunch of chickens that I raised, it cost me 16, if I remember right, 16 cents a pound to produce them. And I got 15 cents a pound for them. So I figured that was time to quit raising chickens and start doing something else. And your chosen profession became? Well, uh, what I did, I kind of made, took stock of what was going on in my, the rest of my farm operations. I kind of tried to keep a uh, very accurate record of how much time I spent on the farm and how much time I spent in the insurance business. And I come to find out at the end of the year that the insurance business was a whole lot more profitable than farming and would seem to make a better living for me than just strictly farming. So I pursued a nationwide insurance agency as well as farming, and that, I continued that until, well, until I retired from nationwide, really. I know your father donated the first 23 acres for Keener Park, named after your family. Um, but what was Keener Park like as you grew up? Well, it was a uh, wood, just totally woods. Uh, it was open back there where you had the uh, ball fields and the soccer fields. Now, that was kind of an open field back there, but it wasn't anything like it is now, the, even the... the uh, topography had been totally rearranged, so to speak, <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, there were, there were blackberries back there, and there was raspberries, and you could go back there and hunt mushrooms, uh, play in the creek. I know I have a good friend, uh, Wilbur Wessler, which was the old Wessler farm up here, and almost every Sunday in, in the summer, I'd either go up there, we'd go down and play in his creek, or he'd come down here and we'd go back and play in our creek. So the creek was a, a, a fun place. He'd splash around water and build little dams and do all kinds of things. Did you, uh, I think you mentioned that at one time they took gravel out of the creek? I'm sure it did, and that goes back to our half mile lane here. That was the August farm chores, was to take the team in the wagon, go back to the creek, and shovel on gravel, and you usually had to take a pick and pick it loose and take the bigger rocks out that on your gravel bed and bring up here with steam and set it on that half mile lane so the next winter the milk truck could get in without getting stuck. But that was August shore. Every August we had a haul of gravel. Did you pasteurize your milk here? No, uh-uh. I never drank pasteurized milk when I was a kid. I didn't know what it was. And did you sell your milk to anybody? Uh, not individually. We sold it to the uh, uh, French Bar Processing Company in Cincinnati. And the uh, milk truck picked it up in 10 gallon cans. Now, can you hear them? Yeah. That's my buddy. That's my buddy. But I, I don't let them stay out here if I can help it, because they are so messy. Yes, they are. They've got a retention pond over here just uh, over the hill here, and that's where they've been staying. And they have, have another retention pond down here by the uh, open house down there. As you come in, there's subdues, and that's where they're heading for now, too. I see them going in. Well, I'm yep. a VOA yesterday. Oh, I'll bet. Well, there's a bunch of them down here on uh, Park, or they have Park area down here on the Ridge, too. Well, did you ever eat your goose? No. Nope. As kids, they never uh, Well, really, just within the last 10, 15 years, the only time we ever had geese, when we were kids, the only thing we heard was the noise like you heard just now, and that would be high up in the air, and it would be, oh, oh, and it'd be heading south yeah. in, in the V formation. Mm -hmm. And in the fall, you'd see several flocks go south, but you'd never hear something here. Same way with deer. Uh, within the last 15 or 20 years, uh, we've seen deer. Before that, we never had any deer here. All right. Yeah. When I was a kid, which would be, well, even up till maybe when I was married. Yeah, was within, just within the last 20 years, we've had deer. <clears throat> Did you ever uh, hear any tantrums or cougars off in the Coyotes, it's about the only thing I've ever heard. Uh, okay. no, no, nothing bigger than that. Foxes, we used to, we used to have a lot of unrun foxes when we had woods instead of houses. There were woods on this side, and, and here where we are, of course, was the olden farming land, and back where the park is, that was all woods. So it used to be fun to sit here and watch Jack Shoemaker's dog chase fox on that fence line over there between us and Gunners, and go through woods up here through Braithers and come out up between us and Hannes, back down through the woods and come back down again. Around yeah, the right. The dogs used to have a good time at it, I guess. Well, after uh, you're a teenager now, let's go back there. What did you do for a change then? Did you date much or? Not, not as a teenager, huh? I guess about the 
biggest thing I can remember is uh, the basketball games in the wintertime over at Westchester. And uh, part of what I did then in order to go to the basketball games was I sold candy for the FFA. So uh, I had my little pack basket and walked around to the, the uh, old gymnasium there up in the, in the bleachers, sold candy. And that was part of part of recreation for me. And, uh, hmm. Well, yeah, my wife in the background mentioned Luther League. And of course, that was our teen years. So we had the, the young people at the church. We had a Luther League meeting once a month, and we, we enjoyed that. Had a good time there, too. Did you go to Fort Union? Not in my teenage years. I uh, didn't go to Fort Union until after we come back from, after I come back from the service. And then not, not too frequently. We spent more time, Mel and I spent more time while we were dating at uh, Lesourdes Lake, a uh, square dance sponsored by the uh, Butter County Rural Youth uh, at Lesourdesville once a month. Once a month? Yeah, once a month during the summer. Did you get there? All by that time we was able to use Dad's car or brother to me. Yeah. I understand your brother John was quite a dancer. He and Delma enjoyed dancing, and when you mentioned Port Union, that first thing that came to my mind was seeing John and Selma down Port Union dance, and they, they really enjoyed dancing. And the last time I can remember that they, they really did much dancing was at our daughter's wedding, Julie's, which was in 1990. We encouraged her to get up and dance, and darn it, they didn't do uh, bitter butt. Did you get on tape? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> no but that, that was one of the things that they, they really enjoyed was, was jitterbug. What do you say, hon? Yeah, we got pictures, but not on tape. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, as you, um, you got married when? 1948. Okay. And how many children did you have? Well, we had three. One son and two daughters. One son is in Canton. He bought a farm and started to pursue farming, but he, like himself, found out that he couldn't make a living support his family the way he'd like to by doing that. So he subsequently bought a tractor trailer over the road tractor trailer and hauled grain for Preble County Landmark for 17 or 18 years. He's uh, finally got to the point where the traffic down in Cincinnati was too much for his nerves and so forth, so he decided to give that up and he's now working for the uh, Preble County Engineer's Office as a water management consultant. So <clears throat> he, uh, he as well as the two girls graduated from Iowa State. Two girls are in Florida, one on one coast, one on the other. Susan is a school teacher. Seems to really enjoy it and like it. And my other daughter is a dental hygienist, and her husband is a manager of a large dairy in Florida. Yeah, ho ho yeah. Actually, not with the production end of it, but with the processing end of it, or in the processing. What was Christmas like when you were a kid on the farm? An orange or an apple and one toy. And that was it. And then, of course, the church always provided it with uh, a little box of candy about that big. Hard candy. Maybe you, you might have gotten one chocolate then, but most of it was hard candy. And oftentimes, then, the church would supply with an orange, too. That was, that was a great treat. Didn't, uh, and at that time, uh, to get an orange, because the shipping wasn't as great as it was today, as far as that goes. Uh, when you went shopping, did you, go, did you go grocery shopping? Or huh. most things right on the farm? That's, that's another thing. That's another thing. Uh, the little grocery store over here is no longer there. What is that in that now? Where Ralph Ely used to be. Furniture, re uh, furniture repair store, I believe, is in there. Where Ralph Ely used to be. Okay. <clears throat> Before Ralph Ely was uh, Hearst owned the store, and he had a fellow by the name of Stanley Peel that drove a little kind of closed van truck. He would come around on Thursdays, I believe, pick up your order, and then you come around Friday and deliver the groceries. And then we having a few chickens, we kind of did a little bar trading, and he would allow us so much for eggs and take out credit for the groceries, and consequently we, to a certain extent, exchanged eggs or groceries. That's what we, that's what we sheeted or shopping. And the other method was to uh, go down to the mailbox and get package from Sears and Roebuck. She had a Sears Roebuck catalog. She ordered a lot of, a lot of our clothes and things that she needed. She ordered another Sears Roebuck catalog. It was delivered to the mailbox. Cool. That's it. I forgot about that. You did? Yeah. Huh. Well, we, when I was a kid, we were 
paint. Yeah, basically. Mm -hmm. And um, that's, where all, that's where we always went for anything. Yeah. Houses, <clears throat> and things like that, clothing, and things like that. Yeah, I, I really don't remember a mom doing a whole lot of shopping like you think about doing today. No, I Huge yeah. Oh yeah. 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 That was that was all fun. I I, I kind of enjoy that. Still do. Canned. Canned. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mother canned everything. We had good food all year long. Oh yeah. 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 Canned. We canned uh, vegetables in the summer and canned meat in the winter. Because <clears throat> uh, yeah. okay. we butchered our own. Used one beef and two or three hogs. And early in the fall, we'd uh, slaughter maybe two or three lambs. With we had the lamb available, so that's what we ate. I like How about hunting? Hunting was uh, different than it has been here, too. We, I can remember Thanksgivings we used to have. My cousin, <clears throat> my mother's sister, her family, come for Thanksgiving. And then we'd all go hunting after that. And it seemed to me like it was always plenty of rabbits. We'd have, probably shouldn't say how many, but 12 or 15 rabbits that we'd have, and we'd fix them, just hang them outside, believe it or not, in the outside cellar. And it seemed like the weather then was cooler than it is now, and those rabbits would keep there for a month. There was nothing by them, no flies or anything like that, like you think of today. <clears throat> but we just hung there and uh, ate as we saw fit. There was, there was plenty of rats, I can remember that now. How important was the county fair? How what? How important was the county fair? Oh, that was a big deal. I got, <clears throat> I got cheated out of part of that, though, because my county fair experience was uh, right during World War II. So, uh, as a freshman year in high school, I can remember, county fair is, uh, yes, I participated in that. I had a Holstein effort, but after that, I, I don't think I was in for it. I don't remember a thing about this, anything other than that one year. And I remember the uh, freshman year, Wes Balser and Leonard Worth and myself went to uh, Ohio State University for the judging team for the FFA. And that was the last year we was able to participate in that because they didn't have that anymore because of gasoline racing in the war. We were lucky enough to really that thing wide open. I remember we, the three of us at Freightman placed <clears throat> very high. I forget the exact figure, but uh, we were in the top ten at Ohio State. So we, we felt real good about it. Good. Uh, what was your favorite memory as a child? Hmm. Your favorite? No, 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 no. How often you see grandparents? Well, I really never knew only one grandparent. That was my mother's mother, Grandma Moore. Uh, they were all deceased before I was old enough to really know them. I had one step-grandmother that I remember, but uh, that was my grandfather's third marriage, I believe. He had lost two wives before that. So my Grandma Boer, uh, who lived on the farm in Evendale, right now where the Evendale Municipal Building is, that was their farm. <clears throat> and uh, we used to stop in there quite frequently when we were coming home from church and visit a little bit with them. And there again, we uh, co-butchered with them, too. Uh, Dad and Uncle Ed, and of course, the boys, we got beer to help. And we instead of doing it yourself, it was a lot more fun when you got to do it with Uncle Ed and the, and the boys down there. The church played an important role in your life. Oh, yes, yes. Every every Sunday, Grandma said, uh, it, was, it was just went without saying you got ready to go to church. And that was it, yeah. What did you do at well, we went to the St. Paul Lutheran Church in Reading, and that was quite a, quite a trip, too, as far as that goes, but nothing was ever said about how far it was or anything else. We, you just went. That was it. <clears throat> uh, as you uh, grew up, uh, their children, they were they raised on the farm also? They were raised right here. here mm -hmm. yeah. yes. And this, how old is this farm now, the farmhouse? Well, this farmhouse, was, this house was originally built in 1835. So it's, uh, what, 175 years old. <clears throat> Sturdy? Well, that's one reason why we maintained it when we sold the farm. Uh, rather than build out in a subdivision with no trees or anything around it, you can appreciate the trees here this morning. And uh, it was historic. This was uh, where we raised our children, where I was born and raised. I've spent my whole life here, except for the few years that I mentioned at the beginning. So it, it's home, and we like it. Do you have any stock here now? Livestock? Yeah. No, I got rid of all of those in 1989 when I retired. Because I had sheep at the time, and I decided that I wanted to spend the winters in Florida, so I couldn't spend the winters in Florida and be nurse made to 150 sheep in February and March. So we sold them. Yeah. I thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you.
you for your time. Well, you're welcome. You're welcome. I enjoy visiting with you. Well, I enjoy returning all this because I've suddenly just clicked because I've been going through the archives mm -hmm. and I've been saving the bills. And uh, some of them were of interest to me. One of them was Hearst. Was it after Hearst, Jonas? Was there anything? He had a grocery store? Did you just mention No, Hearst had the grocery store. Yeah. <coughs> he, uh, and he was the one that uh, owned the store when Stanley Peel bought the little van around and took her order on Thursdays and they delivered groceries on Friday. Mm -hmm. The board did the same thing? The board did the same thing, yeah. See, they were, oh, they were way up there, in, they were way up there in Mods. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> way up there? Yeah, that's right. Well, talk about the Williams' uh, yes. brothers up there and uh, how everybody uh, walked. Everyone they wanted to play baseball. With Westchester, they walk. Sure, sure. Back, you know, yeah. and today, if you ask kids to walk a mile or two, mm. it's just unbelievable. unbelievable yeah. you know? I know circumstances are a lot different now than they were then, but uh, well, you can start using their legs more, I think. When I was in high school, I was fortunate enough to have a bicycle. The bus went past the land to Pisgah, back down to Demick Road, and around back down into Gano and back up 25 to school. I thought, that, that's a waste of time to spend half hour on the bus when I can jump on my bike. 15 minutes, and I'd be the bus to school. Yeah. So that's what I did the whole four years I went to high school. I rode my bicycle over to school. Well, I'll let you mention that Ohio. Do you ever spend any time in the boiler room? Not that much, because it just <laughs> wasn't too safe. <laughs> uh, yeah, you, you could go down the hall, but you better not stay in the boiler room too long. <laughs> Seem, <laughs> seemed like Russell Lee knew where he was all the time. <laughs> did the Williams boys say any time I spent some time they in the boiler room? They would, no, they said they wouldn't admit to it. <laughs> they wouldn't admit to it. <laughs> <laughs> I know D. Russell Lee was telling me in an interview one time about that boiler room oh, yeah. and how special it was. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what I used to do once in a while was visit with the, <coughs> excuse me, oh, uh, janitor. Not each Britain, of course, he was a young one. Marion Fern, what was her, hmm. her dad was, was the janitor. Used to spend some time down there with him. And also, uh, I used to go fall a little bit in the cafeteria, last period in school, go down and visit with Tom Faber in the cafeteria. But Rush, Rush Lee knew where I was then. He didn't, he didn't care as long as I wasn't caught in trouble. He didn't care if I was down there or not. So, <clears throat> well, you know, boys never caused a trouble at school, did they? Well, Brother John wasn't, wasn't the, 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 the piece of the class, you might say. <laughs> he, he, yeah, he and your, uh, that'd be your brother-in-law now. Uh, rap, rap. Paul? Oh, no, no, not Paul. Bob? What's another one? Jerry? No, I'm talking about Rap. John Keener and, and Bud Bates and... Boy, Paul. They're one of the Raffle boys. Those three, uh, they gave the administration a little bit of a problem. Oh, I can say that. This is scary. I'm wondering if you guys can get into that union. School. But Bob and I never got in any trouble. Really? <laughs> yeah. Not a child. Oh yeah. And well, we never get anything real mean or anything like that. To get like kids get in trouble nowadays. No, no way. No. Get caught going a racer or something like that once in a while. Yeah, D. Riley was very stern, wasn't he? Oh boy. He he monitored that state hall without even being in there 99 percent of the time. Because his office was right below the state hall. And he'd tell from down there whether we were studying or whether we were playing. And when he came up the steps and walked in that study hall room, things quieted down, and especially when he grabbed that meter stick and slammed it down across the study hall table. He never had to say anything. He just did it. Turn around and walk out. <laughs> he, was, he was something else. Yes, Russ, was, was. Russ was a good man. He was a good man. I uh, saw him at a parade. I was riding my horse. And uh, he was riding on the side. Church and called me over and I went over there. I don't mind any of the horse I had when I was a kid. Hmm. I said, Really? I said, Well, what was your horse's name? He said, Frank. Hmm. That was the name of my horse. Oh, I'll be darned. I said, Me, Frank. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two Franks at the same time. So he was a good uh, character. Yeah. I guess, you know, the community uh, doesn't know how such an important role the Keener family played in the development of this community. And, um, and I think the park is one thing that people can kind of look at it and remember the name. But you people did so many other wonderful things for the community and we're forever indebted to you.
Thank you. Thank you. Now, I want you to know that. One of the other things I would comment on is my dad, that he was always youth-oriented and a great supporter of Boy Scouts and 4-H. He mentioned Boy Scouts or 4-H. He didn't have any work to do. Right. I know that he was, played a big part in the Boy Scouts around. Mm -hmm. And John did, too. He yes, John, John was a big John uh, was Cub Scout master for about, I don't know, 40 years plus. Probably close to 50, I can think of it. Well, thank you, Finley. You're welcome. You're welcome.